Welcome back to What Matters This Week. I'm Lauren Maloney. Joining us this Sunday is Susanna Davis. She is Vermont's new Racial Equity Executive Director. Susanna, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. First uh, Racial Equity Executive Director of Vermont. What, what drew you to this position? So I never actually went looking for uh, work in racial equity. Uh, my background was in civil and human rights mostly. Uh, after I came out of law school, I went to the legislature for New York City. But what I discovered was that when you do work around equity, no matter what kind of equity, it could be um, related to age discrimination, sex discrimination, racial discrimination, what you find is that racial inequities exist in so many other sectors that you're almost always butting up against those issues. So while I never set out to do racial justice work, um, it ends up being an inextricably linked part of a lot of the social justice advocacy that folks end up doing. So uh, sometime in the last year or two, <laughs> I, I resolved to move to Vermont and was looking for the right opportunity. And unexpectedly, this one came up and uh, I saw it as, as a real shot to do some good work in a place that I was looking forward to moving to. That's great. And you're from New York City. Um, from New York suburbs. Yeah. And you've been working in New York City, obviously, for the, the past few years. Mm -hmm. For about a decade. So what are the differences right off the bat? Um, you know, there are so many stereotypes, so to speak, when it comes to Vermont, maybe, as far as the differences from New York City. Um, have you seen a difference in, in what people might have told you about Vermont or, or a preconceived notion, maybe? Not really, actually. I think that... Um for the most part, Vermont has lived up to the hype. Um, <laughs> it's lived up to its reputation as a place where people um, have more of a live and let live attitude, where people are kind, they're polite, they're friendly, they're neighborly. Um, but they also recognize that every person's uh, path, every person's life is going to be unique. Mm -hmm. And what matters is cultivating a community where people feel included, no matter who they are and what they're about. You could be an attorney, you could be a farmer, you could be a school teacher or any other number of things. Um, but I think there's a real sense of community here. And so far, I've, I've seen it live up to that. Is there a, a first kind of priority when it comes to on the job for you? You've only been on the job, what, almost a month or so right now? What's up first? Do you have a lot of people you want to talk to first? So really for me, um, perhaps the most pressing and most important piece of this is letting people know what I'm here to do and what I'm not here to do. And between you and me and all of your viewers, <laughs> um, that's still yet to be determined. And the reason for that is this is a very new, this is a new role. The first of its kind yet in the state. Yes. Um, and. I, I hope that there won't be too many more, to be honest. Uh -huh. um, my biggest goal in this work is to put myself out of business because there won't be a need for roles like mine when we've fully baked equity into everything that we do. Will we get there, you think, to, to basically put you out of work in, in your so. lifetime and my lifetime? I hope so. We absolutely have the ability as a state and the appetite. I mean, I can't tell you how many folks just in the last four weeks I've been here have approached me and have told me how excited they are for the work and how willing they are to help make it happen. I think that a lot of times average folks don't see themselves as part of solutions, but truth be told, they are the solution and everyone will play a role in this. The question is what role does each Vermonter choose to play? And I think that it's really important to engage people and empower them to, to be part of this work. Yeah. Um, the governor described your work in a press release by saying um, to identify systemic racism in each of the three branches of state government. Um, is this more, um, is, it, is it obvious or are there underlying factors that you really want to look at when it comes to potential racism in the state? So the thing about racism, the thing about sexism, um, disability discrimination, all of these forms of discrimination, they are really often surreptitious, um, really pernicious things that are not always easy to spot, mm -hmm. especially because they've been so deeply ingrained in the systems of which we are a part. This is a nation that's coming up on, you know, 300 years more or less in age, and it was founded on a lot of institutions that had built in 
inequity and prejudice. So unraveling some of those really insidious factors is taking us a long time because we didn't get here overnight and we won't be able to get mm -hmm. out of it overnight. Um, with respect to that description of um, identifying racism in the three branches of state government, absolutely there are policies in place that are racist in nature or sexist in nature or ableist in nature or ageist in nature um, that, that do need to be addressed and corrected. And it's difficult work because we're talking about things that have become so fundamental to some of our workings and functions that we really have to look critically at the broad impact that discrimination has had on us thus far mm -hmm. um, and the change that we really want to see in eradicating it. Is there a, a sector you think needs specific attention and you know off the top of my head I think of traffic stops, housing, maybe workplace oriented issues. Is there one sector or another you hope to dive into? No, I don't, I don't want to identify any sectors in particular or um, call out any agencies in particular. I think that we're all in this together. Right. And like I said, I mean, this is, we're attacking something that is so pervasive in every aspect of our lives that it's impossible to come up with a priority list, mm -hmm. really. Or perhaps it's not impossible, I suppose, depending on who you ask. It might be very clear. Um, but I think that we should be moving forward all branches, all agencies, all sectors, all regions of the state. And that means looking at everything with fresh eyes and looking at it as one holistic picture, not just um, taking an easier way by um, pinpointing certain more obvious areas. Yeah. I'm sure you're aware too, in Bennington, um, a former state representative, Kaya Morris, had some uh, racist threats uh, last year, the uh, year before, and it, it caused her to um, resign. And, and there are some issues in the southern part of the state when it comes to that. Is that something you're going to tackle and look into? It's not. So we have mechanisms in place already that are designed to tackle those issues. We have law enforcement, both local and state level. We have a uh, human rights commission. We have reporting agencies whose function it is to address um, civilian and official complaints when they come in. Uh, the way that that particular case was handled is... And the there are separate investigations that, that are going on when it comes to that too, I should mention. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, so that aside, there are already structures in place that are designed um, to field those requests. But as you probably already know, and as many marginalized people will tell you, it's often not enough. So what I am here to do is to look at the upstream factors that lead to those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. Looking at systems, looking at policies, looking at how we are handling these and similar events as a state and as a government so that when those, if those events happen, and of course we hope they don't, but if and when they do, they're being handled appropriately. Do you have a timeline, whether it's in your mind or, or something that you actually have to meet as, as far as, you know, in six months you want to have looked at this or, or tried to figure out, a, you know, a solution to X and then in a year maybe Y? Do you have, do you have kind of um, an internal plan as you work things out? So there are some uh, things that are set forth in the legislation that created my role, certain reporting requirements. Of course, there'll be testif you know, testimony given mm -hmm. at certain hearings. Um, so there are those benchmarks. I am working on a strategic plan. The timing is going to be difficult. And really, I don't think that we want to constrict ourselves too much to timing. Right. We want to get this right. And so what's important to me and I think to the administration is the quality of the work and the time that we put in to the planning, I think is really going to benefit us in the long run. Saying that. Sure. My job is scheduled to sunset in five years. <laughs> so I suppose an overarching um, clock is, is, is set for that. And of course, I, I say that a bit tongue in cheek. But, um, you know, like I said before, I, I, am cons I am the first in this role. I hope that this work continues in perpetuity in this state. Mm -hmm. But it is, it is a personal goal of mine that there's less of a need for roles like this because the work becomes innate in all of the other work that we're doing. When you bump into people, I know you've only been here um, just about a month or so, and tell people about your work. Um, are there complaints or things that, that you hear that may have surprised you or impressed you? 
I've heard, I've received a few uh, folks reaching out to me, expressing on a personal level their um, their gratitude for me being here, for the role having been filled, and sharing a little bit about their experiences in Vermont. So far, I have not been shocked or surprised by anything that I've heard, but you know, a lot of times with with communities that feel uh, excluded or marginalized, it can be very difficult to gain the trust of people. For people to open up. Absolutely. So I, I expect and I, I hope that over time um, I will have gained the trust of the everyday Vermonter such that the person or someone might feel comfortable approaching me either in public or, you know, at some sort of formal event or what have you um, to be able to interact with me on that level. I do believe that government should be accessible to people and accountable to people. And so I think the governor does a great job of that, of, of being out um, on the ground, meeting people where they are. And I hope that I can also continue. Okay. Susanna, I really appreciate you being here. Thank you so much. Thank you. We'll be right back on What Matters This Week.